Hello, Extreme Ironing fans. I'm Kevin Ripa, and this is My Sands 3 Minutes Max. Uh, in today's episode, we uh, are continuing our discussion on the role of a digital forensics expert uh, in criminal defense. And uh, that role is to validate methodology. Now, remember, all of the five things that I'm talking about, they have to do with uh, explaining the what we're doing to the trier of fact. A defense expert, although they're... Uh, typically paid by a defense lawyer uh, or the accused, um, that doesn't mean that they're, that they're buying our testimony, nor should it mean that. My job and the way I approach it is to educate the trier of fact, to look at the case and make sure that the judge or the jury, whoever is, is hearing the case, uh, understands what they're hearing and understands uh, you know, any alternatives, but we'll talk about those later. Right now we're talking about validating the methodology. So uh, I wanna know if uh, the person who did the work, the examiner on the other side, uh, did they use a me methodology that would get us the most complete results? Uh, what they did, can it withstand scrutiny? Um, and, and this is like, how did you do it? What program did you use? Is the program designed to do that? Did it collect everything it's supposed to collect? And did it read it accurately? Uh, did the examiner use uh, industry standard practices? Uh, best, you know, best practices. And if they didn't, where did they stray? How far did they stray? And what effect did that have on the findings of these facts. A great example is one we talked about last week where uh, an examiner or an investigator may capture screenshots of evidence that's online. And, and, and I'm afraid that's just not good enough. And I don't want anybody thinking that, that uh, I'm out and I'm against law enforcement because that couldn't be further from the truth. Law enforcement in, in everywhere, not just digital forensics, but especially in digital forensics, has an uphill battle. They have a, 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 just, just a terrible situation. There's never enough of them, and they don't have enough money for training. Let's face it. In, in white collar crime, there's X amount of officers in that division. There's X amount of officers in homicide, and that's uh, largely unchanged. But yet when you look at white collar crime, it's happening more online exponentially than it's happening in the bricks and mortar world. Have they added digital forensic examiners whose job it is to just do white collar crime? Typically, in a, in a, in a tech crimes unit, you're doing everything. There's never enough tech crimes officers mistakes can be made. It's not their fault. They're trying to do the best job that they can. And many units knock it out of the park. Shout out to Calgary Police Service Tech Crimes Unit. Man, probably some of the best tech crimes guys I've seen anywhere. I wish that that was consistent across a lot of jurisdictions, but sadly mistakes get made understand that where, where you're doing it right and you're doing it properly and you really care and you're getting it right, those aren't ever crossing my desk. The ones that are crossing my desk are the ones that are having problems. In the meantime and in between times, that's it. Another episode of 3 Minutes Max.